when you start a church, there's two aspects to every, everything. There's the nuts and bolts, there's the bricks and mortar, there's the regulations, and there's the spiritual side of things. And trust me, in Canada, you cannot have one without the other. We are very heavily watched. There's always one more government form that has to be completed. And we jumped through a lot of hoops and um, we have gone from piggybacking on another church to being able to conduct ourselves directly with Canada Revenue Agency. And part of this is being chartered. And Marion, I'd like you to come up and just explain it, what it means, and yeah. It's good to be here. And um, uh, being the Grace Community Church now has reached the place where they are a charter church. They're registered with Revenue Canada and they have their own registration number. Prior to this, in Foursquare, the way we structure things is that when a new uh, group of people come on board, a new church comes on board, they're under the covering of a mother church. And one of the main reasons is that they don't have a registration number at that point, so the mother church is able to issue receipts for their contributions, as well as take care of their, their bookkeeping and all of those things until they grow to a place of stability and different things. Um, being, uh, having your financial reports in on time as an administrative area, uh, having a core of people to serve the church and serve the past, the pastor, looking for faithful people usually takes sometimes um, uh, two to five years for this to happen. In Beamsville, I think it's less than uh, this dated on November uh, 2012, so you've done pretty well and you began 2011, that's right. So it's, it's gone really well and we're excited. God has done great things here in uh, Beamsville as well as um, opened the door to purchase this building for the, the fellowship here in Beamsville, which is really exciting. It gives the people a sense of being home. And I was watching a documentary on Haiti last night. And they were um, kind of bashing this one group of people that wanted to reconstruct a church down in Haiti, looking at the massive needs that were there. And they thought, why do they have to put all this money into the construction of a church when there's people hungry and without homes and all of that? And uh, the pastor brought up some really good points, and I'm sure that you'll agree with them too. The church brings hope to a community. The church brings life to a community. And it's an open door for people to come and, and receive help, receive help in the time of trouble. So the church, I believe that is one of the greatest instruments that God has given us, the local church, to reach the community and the world around about us. And I really challenge people that decide, well, we don't need the church and we can you know, watch TV at home. And that's all good and true, but it's kind of a one-way thing. You don't have that, that hug on a Sunday morning. You don't have that interaction. We need one another. And this is how community is built. And I've been through lots of areas of my life. Um, pastor for 28 years and served on... Uh, national levels for a lot of years, lots of people all around me, and then all of a sudden, all that's not going to come here. You're no longer that, your husbands. God wants to be the Lord, and your life totally changes. But you know what? God doesn't change. He doesn't change. But what I'm saying is that if I ever missed the church, was through those times, and I'm grateful for those times where the Lord walked with me through all of that. And you'll find, uh, as life gets tough, we need one another. You know, the person sitting beside you is very important. They're part of the body of Christ. You know, and whether you're four square or whether you're not four square, that's not the issue. That's not the issue. We're serving the kingdom of God together. Well, I'm not the preacher here today, Dave, so I'm going to just stay with the back of the <laughs> But anyway, I'm happy to be here. Um, this chart has been around for a while, but it, there's just been a lot of business happening. And I'm doing two charts today, and what does it happen after this? We have another one, so it's very exciting what God has done. And we're grateful for David and Amy. Uh, Cripps and Annalisa and Danielle being 
the gifts that God has given this local church to lead the church. But you know, they can't do it on their own. They can't do it on their own. We're not a whole ranger. We're a team of people called by God to reach the community for the Lord. So don't forget to hold up your pastor's arms. Get in there and bear the burden. Be faithful. And uh, just serve God. You'll be surprised. No way to join them to touch the world outside. Amen. Offer from Jesus. Amen? What more can we say? I just want to read Philippians uh, chapter 1. Uh, Paul's letter to the Philippians. I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from this day until now. Being confident of confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. This is my prayer that your love may abound more and more and more in knowledge and depth. We grow as Christians. We don't just drink milk for the rest of our life. So that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless until the day of Jesus Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Christ to the glory and praise of God. That's our, our great commission here. So that's it. And God has not started this work that He's not going to finish it. Amen. The Lord doesn't start things that He that He doesn't um, believe in finishing. So be encouraged. Maybe there's a few extra seats here this morning, but there's angels sitting on them. And uh, there's a whole community out there that needs Jesus. So as we uh, continue to serve Him, uh, let us do so. And I'm so thankful for Grace Community Church. I'm going to pray after I uh, present this uh, charter, a beautiful certificate here. Just dropped your pen. And it says, the Foursquare Gospel Church of Canada Charter to the family of believers in Christ Jesus at the Beamsville Foursquare Gospel Church. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. This document confirms that the church name in this charter is here, hereby authorized to minister in the name of the Foursquare Gospel Church of Canada. This charter is granted by resolution of the Board of Directors of the Foursquare Gospel Church of Canada, effective at Port Equipment, British Columbia, Canada, November 30, 2012. So here we are. So I wonder if David Eady would come, and um, if you have any uh, PAC members that would like to come and just uh, stand with us, if not, that's how, okay. How many board members are here today? Actually, let's just come on quickly. Yes, come on up. We'll, just, we'll grab a quick picture just for national office for no reason other than that. All for all purposes. And, uh, there you go. It's there always you go. good to affirm what the Lord has Amen.
think, to spend three, three and a half years walking and talking with Jesus and everything he went through. I think he'd learn a lot. Well, in that process, it was never easy for some of them. It was very hard. God had to work certain things out. Repeated trials came and they stumbled. But in the end, an amazing thing happened. Somewhere in that three and a half years, no matter how many hits they took, they got up and they went back at it. They went on to do what they've done. We have the Bible now as a perfect record, a divine record, if you will, of what they accomplished. So here we are. We're 2,000 years later, and nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. God, through His Holy Spirit, calls men and women to, to a work. We're all called. We're all called to something. And today, um, it is with great pleasure, I don't know a better word, I guess there is one, one of us, mainly soul man, has, uh, has uh, come a long way. And I understand this because I used to get excited to run up to my pastor and I'd say, Pastor, Pastor, look at this. Look what God is showing me. Look at this. And uh, it was a neat time. I remember those times. And those times are coming back again as I pray. The Lord takes me back to the joy of my salvation. But I don't know why it is. Some people go through a refiner's fire process, and I believe everybody, I have thoughts on this, everybody that's serious about doing anything for the Lord goes through this. And for some people, it's nothing more than standing beside, you know, a marshmallow fire at a cookout. That's all they seem to need. Others, mainly me and a few of my friends, we seem to go through a lot. But in that process, you learn. And somewhere in that process, just like Peter, just like Paul, just like so many other ones that were called. You have times where you don't know what's going on. You don't understand it. All you can do is stand back and say, the Lord will never leave me for support. Never leave me nor forsake me. There's other times like David where you dance before the Lord with great joy. There's other times where you ask the Holy Spirit something and instantly it shows up and manifests himself and you have the answer. There's other times, wow, wow, where are you, Lord? But all the time that you're going through this, if you faint not, you will learn of yourself and you will learn of the God who made you. Do you know you're beautifully and wonderfully made? In the last two years of my life, um, I've developed a friendship with Soman. I've seen him come through many, many struggles. And about four months ago, I asked him to come share something at the church four or five months ago. Well, if I have time. I said, okay. I said, okay. I never said too much to him. Sometimes I jumped down on him pretty hard, but I never said too much to him. I just smiled. And uh, just to back up a little bit, a little bit, about a year and a half ago, I looked at him and I said, you know you're called to the ministry. And he received it with reservations. We'll say that. And I said, in the fullness of time, I says, you know, you'll end up, you'll end up in ministry. Well, about two weeks ago, I said, two or three weeks ago, I said, he's been sharing what God is doing and whatnot. God is very much in it. And I says, my brother, I says, I'd like you to just get up and share that. Because you see, as you glow with the Lord, something starts to happen. Revelation knowledge starts to come. That's when God takes a verse, a chapter in the Bible, and literally just etches it on your heart. I've had four of these happen in the last 25 years. The very first one that God, the first scripture that God etched on my heart, David made a statement. He says he would have fainted. Only he knew that he would see the land, the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And that has carried me through a lot of hard times. 
And since then, there's been other scriptures that six, eight months, they've been in, just in my prayer. They, I, I see them there, and God teaches me. It's called revelation knowledge. And when God gives you revelation knowledge into something, man cannot erase it. You will never reason it out. The enemy will come and try and steal it from you, but he can't. It's etched in your heart, literally. So, it is, it's just, if you understood how Pastor Edie and I are so pleased with everybody in this church, and how proud we are of you, we understand the struggles, we understand what you go through. None of us are exempt from that. But we also understand that if you don't faint, and you don't give up, and you don't turn to the left and to the right, and basically, I had that banner made up right there. And there's a reason for that. I've had so many things over the years try to move me to the left and to the right. The enemy learned that he would never get me under the church. So he started coming at me in a different way. And simply was, well, I'll go here for six months. The pastor's nicer and it's easier. <laughs> you know, much gentler. Gee, Brother Dave, there's churches five kilometers from your home. Why would you bother minus 12 pushing snow to go over to Niagara Falls, New York, four or five times a week? Well, I would go to other churches and I'd sit there and I'd listen to other pastors, good people. And I learned something. Man, oh man, if you went to that church, you'd be blessed. Where the problem is, is that God never really me to go. Man. And for those of you who know me and have been around me in so bad, sometimes we have some interesting conversations. We'll leave it at that. But a while ago, I watched him at a funeral get up and share something. So today, I'm going to invite our brother up. He's going to share in the 23rd Psalm. And is he a perfect man? No. Does he have work left to do in his life? Has God got some things to work out? You betcha. No different than you. No different than I. But, come on up here, Brother Sylvan. I want you to realize something. That he who began a good work will be faithful to complete it. So, Sylvan, you have five minutes, you have a half an hour, whatever it takes. Okay? You are free in the Lord, my precious brother. And, uh, just know that, uh, know that, hey, God loves you, man. And in the midst of everything you've gone through, and, and I know I know a lot of that, you've come a long way. And you get used to looking at a group of people, okay? <clears throat> to speak to my pastor. 
So Van shared some of his heart about getting beat up, but there's a whole other thing too about him. I have watched him learn and grow in the Lord. He's a blessed man. When we talk, and we do have a lot of positive conversations, far more than we do butting heads, but when we talk, the Holy Spirit just gets stronger and stronger on him. And he's learning and he's growing, just like Peter. You know that, eh? I compare him a lot to Peter. Um, there have been times I have phoned him and thrown things at him that the church has needed done, and within an hour and a half, it's done. The Bible talks about a man or a woman that walks with the Lord, having a future and a hope. How hard would it be to put Jeremiah 29, 11 up there, sweetheart? If you can, it's okay. And if there's one common denominator that I see between everybody, everybody that pays the price, and I don't know why it's a campfire with some weenie roasts for some, and for others the furnace is turned up seven times hotter, I don't know why that is, okay? God's bottom line on your future, okay? Bottom line. You never look at anything in the natural. If you look at things in the natural, you will lose every time. Every time. God's bottom line, for I know the thoughts that I have towards you. This isn't Pastor Dave. This isn't our supervisor, Marion. Okay? This is God. I know the thoughts 
that I have towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. See that? When you study the New Testament and roll some of the Old Testament into it, and they do blend together very well, it is a divinely written book, you will learn that certain people have to go through a lot. But you know what? They're richly rewarded. A month and a half ago, we had a, uh, a gentleman come out of the States named Rob Bennett. He came here and he shared his heart. I can remember talking and working with Rob back in the day. He was, without a doubt, voted poster child of the year, most likely to fail in every area of his life. He now has received a Congressional Mem Medal of Honor for his writings and his work with women. How did that happen? Well, it sure wasn't Rob. It was God. You see, we all have to go through something. God is faithful. He will never put more on you than you can bear. Any time, my brother and sister, you can turn and go back. Any time. You can abort the process. The problem with that is having spent 10 years of my life street witnessing over in the States, I seen some pretty rough people. I was on some pretty back alleys and I always went down into the places where a lot of other people wouldn't go. And, 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 and you would pray before you go and you'd say, Lord, lead me. And you had little Christian tracks, little cartoon tracks. They were my point of contact. That's what I used to break the ice, if you will. And there'd be some withered up person there living hard, living hard, rough, rough, rough. And I'd give it to him, and I'd say, hi, I'm from the church up the road. And their countenance would just turn right up, just, wow, wow. I remember when my grandma, I remember when, I remember when. I had a call to pastor, I had a call to preach. I was an evangelist, I believed. And we'd get talking about the goodness of the Lord. And you could just feel, you know, wow, just like hooking a dead battery up to a good battery. Just everything lights up and works the way it should. And then almost as quick as that process started, it would stop. And they'd say, but this has happened and that's happened. And I'd work them hard, man. I'd say, you know, I say the gifts and callings are without repentance. God didn't make a mistake. And they'd say, but, and then the buts had come. And they'd say, look at this. And they'd look at that. And the enemy, they just had that brief fleeting moment of time you see, they had tasted the Lord and they had seen that he was good. They had started down the process of letting God do a work in their heart. And somehow it stopped. And the first four or five times this happened, I didn't understand it and it really bothered me. And then as I grew in the Lord and just through time and being in situations, I realized that there's a lot of people out there that started out to do something for the Lord. And for whatever reason, they gave up. And trust me, anybody who starts out to do anything for the Lord will have a thousand reasons to give up. But you know what? Many a night when I didn't understand what was going on. I had the girl who led me to the Lord come back to my apartment with a fire extinguisher and try and break the door handle down. Like, <clears throat> okay? Lots of things went on. And I had to make a decision. Do I kick the door open and beat everybody up? Or do I just sit there and take it? I don't know why some of us, it's so easy. If you listen to Pastor Edie's testimony, if she will open up to you, if the Lord says to, you know, her walk with the Lord is entirely different than Pastor Dave's testimony and what he went through. I don't know why. You know, because he shared, I'll take a little liberty and I'll say, I don't know why Sovan went down the roads that he went down and the things he fought. But I do know one thing, 
that when we talk now, the man, for the lack of a better way of putting, is almost becoming bulletproof. Regardless of which way the enemy comes, he's getting to the point now where he just says, you know, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not want for work. I shall not want for finances. And he's learning. And in that process, something happens. You literally reach a point where all of a sudden, it's just easier to go on with the Lord than it is to go back. It really is. If you read Hebrews, the 11th chapter, okay, the heroes of faith, you will see every one of them had opportunity to turn back. And you know, for some, for some turning back and going back to their old past wouldn't be a drastic lifestyle. Wouldn't be, you know. For others, it would, be, it would have deadly consequences. So, I'm going to close, but I just want to leave you with a parting thought. Everything in your life has to start somewhere. Three years ago, give or take, I had lunch with Marion, um, and I shared my heart shortly after. She said, David, I believe God is with you, and... Pastor Edie was part of all this, of course, and here we are. Now, for those of you who have been around for a time or two, you'll know that, hey, hey, there's been lots go wrong. But you know what? There's been far more go right. And every Sunday, I unlock that door. I'm learning to pray and humble myself and say, you know, Father, I can't do this. And my whole life, I've done a lot. I don't think I've ever started out to get something I haven't gotten, okay? But in that process, you're humbled, you learn things, but if you don't stop, all oh, the blessings. I've shared often that 25 years ago, if you sat me in a chair and you said, you know, just stick it out, just stick it out, don't move to the left or to the right, you'll be a blessed man. Well, I can stand here and tell you I'm a blessed man. Two and a half years ago, I started praying, Lord, take me back to the joy of my salvation. God has given people in my life that have done an amazing job raising children. And I watch them and I mirror them and I'm learning and it's a process. I can say with all assurity, the last six months, we have had some hard times, but as, a, but as an overall statement, I think our family life, the Cripps' family life, has come a long way. And I thank God for that. You see, that's a byproduct of me just slowing down and doing what God wants. So often, so often, we have to, we have to reason everything out. You want me to tell you something? Just seek the Lord. Four or five times a week. Don't make a big deal out of it. You don't need to make a big deal out of it. Jesus never made a big deal out of anything. Just stop what you do and say, you know, Father, I will accept nothing less than your perfect will for my life. And then hang on. I said, hang on. Because man, oh man, you're going to have a target on your back, okay? And you're going to take some real good hits. Oh, oh. But if you just keep going and just stay where you believe God has you to stay, all the blessings. They far overshadow anything. If anybody needs prayer, come and find us after service. We'll gladly pray for you in private up here. But just put that back up one more time, sweetheart. If God had a bottom line, we are such a bottom line driven society. What does it cost? How long will it take? What's the bottom line? Well, this is God's bottom line right there. Another good scripture to read out of different translations. I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you a future and a hope. I have 11 friends that I took a pencil and paper not too long ago and I wrote down their names and I rated where they were in their walk with the Lord. 
And you know what? The 11 men that I started out with, that I would say are my friends, we're doing good. We're doing good. And every one of us have a future and a hope. And we've learned, never look at things in the natural. If the enemy can get you into the natural, when's it going to happen? How's it going to happen? Ba, 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 ba. You'll just, you'll smoke you every time. Father, we thank you that we're two or three are gathered, you're in the midst of us. And Father, I thank you for the testimony that we heard today. I thank you for the great thing that happened with our charter, Father. Just one more piece. So Father, here we are, a group of believers in you. We turn our lives and our will over to you, Father, even more. Father, we the people of Grace Community Church will accept nothing less than your perfect will for us individually and corporately. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.